All right, so we're making this blues cupcake, and trust me, it's gonna be delicious. The first ingredient that you really wanna study are seventh chord arpeggios. Now, I'll tell you, when I first started studying the blues and somebody said arpeggios and blues, I was like, nope, there's no reason to study arpeggios and blues until I realized, you know, how important the cupcake was. So in the blues, you saw me playing the demo with major chords, but a real blues kind of plays seventh chords, at least for the one chord or seven chords. And here is an A7. Now it's very important to check this out. These chords here are being played either by your keyboard player your secondary guitar player, even you at some time. So all of these notes, all of them, are coming through that speaker into the audience's ears. And when you look at this chord here, well, if, if you dissect it for what it is, it looks like, and I'm gonna talk about intervals, you can look at your charts that you have. You have a one, a five, a flat seven, a major third, and you can either play with the five here, or a flat seven here, and a one. And you've probably heard me say, one, three, five, and flat seven. Those intervals are very, very important to the blues. And the cool thing about this chord here is the only reason it's this shape is because this is where all the notes are physically that my hand can handle. But there are more of these intervals everywhere. And I want to show you this, and I want you to practice this, okay? If we're on the fifth fret, and we're playing an A blues, I'm going to put my middle finger on the fifth fret here. This is my root note, my one. Okay? Then I'm going to put my first finger on the fourth fret of the uh, A string. That's my major third. That's another uh, component, but when you play the chord here, you can't really play it. But it is here. One, three. Then we're going to go with our ring finger to the uh, seventh fret. This is five. One, three, five. That's our major triad for a major chord. Then we have our flat seven on the fifth fret of the D string. So right now, here they are. One, three, five, flat seven. All right, that's our first piece of a uh, seventh chord, but we can duplicate it an octave higher. We're going to put our ring finger on, on the uh, seventh fret of the D string. That's our one. Then uh, middle finger onto the sixth fret of the G string. Three. First finger, fifth fret of the uh, B string. Five. Pinky up the eighth fret. Flat seven. And then our one. Fifth fret. Again, you have it on your charts, but you really want to practice this. Even backwards. Now, when I started to play it forward, you might have said to yourself, man, that sounded familiar. What was that? And you were probably referring to this. Because that is a standard bass line in the blues. Now, again, we're in the cupcake. Okay, the cupcake. What is a cupcake? Okay, well, it is knowing the 12-bar blues. It is the chords that go into it. It is the bass lines. It is the rhythm, everything about it. And here we have our bass line that you're going to hear bass players play. They are in the cupcake. And they play one, three, five, flat seven in some sort of fashion. It's just how it is, all right? And you're probably going, some people hopefully are going, whoa, okay, that is cool. And it is cool because as a lead guitar player, you can do that anytime you want. And I, I, I'm not going to, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to. You can connect them chromatically if you're daring. I'm only going to do that once, all right? And so the idea is, is that the seventh chord arpeggios, no matter how they're being played by a bass or by a guitarist, are all coming through the speakers. All right, so you as a lead guitar player want to know this map. We're starting to build our blues map. And so we have our seventh chord. We have our arpeggio that you want to study. Trust me. And you have your bass lines. And all I'm doing, you can see that pick. Boom, boom, da, 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 play that for someone, they're gonna start bobbing their head. As a matter of fact, the people in the studio are bobbing their head right now as I do it, I promise. See you on our next lesson.